Patrick, what do you hope to achieve today? I think today we want to uh, make people aware of the problems of prostate cancer. Uh, we want to enable persons to have a test, the first test, and I suppose the overall aim is that we end the day having saved some lives. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. I'd just like to spend a few moments talking to you about prostate cancer and telling you why I'm so concerned about prostate cancer. I suspect that many of you here this afternoon are also a little bit concerned about it. And I wouldn't mind betting that every single one of you knows somebody who's got prostate cancer or who perhaps has died from prostate cancer. It is so common now. It is the most common cancer to affect men in this country. Something like one in ten of us are going to get this disease. And if we're of Afro-Caribbean origin, the chances of getting it are probably three times greater. So we're talking about a very, very significant disease. People like me are diagnosing something like 41,000 new cases every year. Now you work that out. That is something like 200 every working day. It is likely that this evening 200 men are going to go home and say, I'm sorry, love, but the consultants told me I've got prostate cancer. And it'll be the same tomorrow. 10,000 men a year are dying of this disease every, day, every year. Work that out, and that is, on average, one every hour. 10,000 men a year. Look at that figure another way, and that is the equivalent of a jumbo jet full of men crashing every 10 days. Now, these are dreadful statistics, aren't they? And we are dealing with one of the worst cancers in this country. And this country has one of the worst mortality rates in the whole of Europe. And we've got to do something about this. Prostate cancer is like any other cancer. If we can diagnose it early and treat it, we can cure it. But the problem comes in trying to diagnose it early. And having the blood test that you've all agreed to have later today is one way of helping to diagnose it early. It's not a perfect test. It's not 100% reliable. It's the best test we've got, and until something better comes along, we've got to make the most of it. But it is prone to false results. In a little while, a professional phlebotomist is going to take some blood out of your arm, and later today it will be taken to the nearest biochemistry laboratory where they're going to measure the amount of PSA in your blood. Now, PSA is a chemical that we all have in our healthy prostate glands, and a certain amount of it leaks into our blood. And by measuring the amount in our blood, it gives an indication to people like me that there might just be something wrong. It's prone to false results. If you've got a bit of infection in your bladder, a bit of infection in your prostate, even if you've had intercourse within 24 hours or maybe been on a bicycle, it might raise the level a little bit. But more often than not, if the level of PSA in your blood is above a certain threshold, it says to people like me, there's something wrong with that man's prostate, and it could be an early cancer. And this is what it's all about today. Not a good test, not a perfect test, the best test we've got, and until something better comes along, we've got to make the most of it. As Sod's Law would have it, it's even prone to false negative results. It is possible to have a normal PSA and still have a prostate cancer. But we've still got to make the most of this test until we've got something more reliable. The earliest and most important symptom of prostate cancer is to have no symptoms at all. Don't wait till you've got symptoms, because by the time symptoms arise, it can be too late. The prostate gland is deep inside a man's pelvis, so all the symptoms will show themselves when a man goes for a pee. And the first question is, how often a day do you go for a pee? You know, the European Union has drawn up a standard number of visits that you can go to the toilet. Well, I'm not here to promote us leaving or staying in the European Union. But they say in Brussels, up to six times is OK. All right, it depends on many things. It depends how much you drink, how much you sweat, what exercise you take, maybe what other tablets you're taking. And I think if you're going seven or eight times a day, your doctor won't report you to a court in Brussels. But if you're going 15 or 20 times a day, there's something wrong with your prostate. 
doesn't necessarily mean it's cancer. It probably is simple benign enlargement, easily treated with some tablets or maybe a small operation. And then the next thing is how many times at night do you get out of bed for a pee? The European Union says up to twice. Again, that depends if you've been drinking normally up to bedtime. If you have a couple of pints of beer before going to bed, you can expect to get out four or five times. But if you can honestly say you've been drinking normally up to bedtime, and you're still getting out of bed five or six times, something wrong with your prostate. And then when you want to go for a pee, can you hold it? Or do you have to get there with a rush? And then when you get there, does it come straight away? Or do you have to stand there and wait? And then when it comes, what's the jets like? Does it go out and hit the wall? Or is it more likely to land on your boots? Is going for a pee like trying to water the garden when somebody's standing on your hosepipe? Do you pass blood? Never ignore blood in your water. It's not the most common symptom for prostate cancer, but blood in your water might be because of bladder cancer or a kidney cancer, which is altogether another story. And then when you think you've finished, does it stop immediately or does it carry on dribbling? By dribbling, I don't mean those last few drips you have to shake off when you're still in the toilet, but is it still running down your leg when you're walking down the high street? If so, there's something wrong with your washer. Those are the sort of symptoms. But please remember, the earliest and most important symptom of prostate cancer is to have no symptoms at all. My father was diagnosed with prostate cancer at the age of 79, so I've become very active in fundraising and also given the 10,000 men die every year statistic, I thought it was absolutely essential uh, to support this event as a 45 year old man, get my PSA background check as well. And I hope more men take advantage of this both today and in future if we're lucky enough to benefit from other screening events. In a few days time you will get a letter from me telling you the result of your test. We work on a green, amber or red system, a traffic light system if you like. Hopefully you will get a green letter and it will say your blood PSA was only, and it will quote a very low figure, which is perfectly normal for a man of your age, but if you've got symptoms, go and see your doctor anyway because it's not a perfect test and get it checked in 12 months. Some of you will get an amber letter, which will say it was just a fraction above the upper limit of normal. In which case, I'm a bit like a policeman saying to you, you were doing 32 miles an hour and a 30 mile an hour limit. With a bit of luck, he won't take you to magistrate's court or put points on your license. The policeman will say, just you watch your speed. You are just over the top. And if I send you an amber letter, I'm saying, just watch your PSA. It was just over the top. Ask your doctor to check it in three months' time. Some of you will get a red letter which will say it was definitely abnormal and you ought to go and see your doctor who might need to send you to a specialist for further investigations and treatment. And if you get an amber or a red letter, you will also get my telephone number and you're invited to phone me up and I'll be very happy to have a chat with you about it. On behalf of Fleet Lines, I'd like to say a really big thank you to you the staff here for what you've done today. Thank you yes. very much. Our pleasure. Thank you. All right, we've got the first sort of samples going to Primley Park by Serve, Surrey, South East and London Couriers. <laughs> 